you're here as well, and that we sound like we're on the same page, at least in the whole concept of moving forward and trying to be able to rebuild that trust with veterans and the VA. The one question I have is all the way back to when the chairman started on this whole issue of choice. And, um, and, and let me just say, and let me start by saying, you know, I want the VA to be healthy. I want the VA to work for my constituents in northern Indiana. And unfortunately, so when I sit in these hearings and I listen to every single question my colleagues are asking, I still think in the, in the back of my mind, we are not as functional in the state of Indiana as some of our neighboring colleagues here. And that's my desire. That's the desire of our veterans. They want everything to work for them because we promised them that when they went to fight. And so um, that's my goal is to continue to work as, as closely as we can to get the VA healthy. And so I so much appreciate the, the report that you have and the plans and that kind of a thing. But I'm still caught in the um, question that, <laughs> that uh, Representative O'Rourke didn't uh, want an answer on. But it will help me to have an answer on when can we see some of this happening. Because, you know, I was on the conference committee back in October when we did the VA reform reset type thing. We still don't really have a choice program in my district in northern Indiana. And so um, I just, it was interesting, I just had a phone call with my district staff that works on our, all of our VA casework in the district. And um, they were just telling me that just recently we got a call from an actual VA hospital in the state of Indiana at telling the veteran to call my office because the VA hospital can't get appointments and can't get anything through for this veteran. I am thinking to myself, something is wrong. There is some kind of a clog in the line. And I would ask you guys, and even uh, 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 Mr. Gibson, if you would, um, I am more than willing to come to that uh, computer, IT, show me the world type thing. I am more than willing to be there. I will be there. But I am again asking if you, um, you or the Secretary could seriously come into my district and if we could have conversations about how do we make this work better. Because I think that would be one of the um, quickest ways and much more efficient ways to actually see that there, you know, it just isn't happening like you are describing it around some of these areas of the country. That would be my first question. We will we'll do it. I appreciate uh, Bob it. Bob and I will come. Uh, we will bring some of our medical center leadership from Indiana. And we will also bring uh, senior representation from the TPA. I really appreciate part of the country. it. I really do. And then, um, and then my second comment is back to this choice program, is that, you know, I, I remember being on the conference committee when we talked about that 40-mile radius. I was, I am and still and very, very concerned. When you are looking at areas that have rural places, which are the hardest sometimes to get care to, that is why this evolved in the first place, was like, let's get care to them from a community-based hospital, somebody near them. And, and one of the things that I find in my district, which is why it is so frustrating to say, if we are going to look at broadening that radius, it is going to cost a whole lot of money. And I know when you are talking about, we, yeah, you need our help, it means money. Um, but it is so, it, it's, it's so problematic in places in these rural areas, and, and to uh, Representative Custer's point, when you are dealing with winter weather. Winter weather in my state closes states. We have state of emergencies, and we can't travel. And, and you know, I am finding myself getting involved. The veterans are calling my office and then having me make phone calls to try to get choice implemented. It literally is not rolling out in our district. So what, can you just comment on that? I mean, when can we see that actually happening? Uh, one of the points that Secretary McDonald constantly makes is the VA is the canary in the coal mine for American medicine. So the problems that you are describing about rural health care are problems in every aspect of health care, getting providers there, getting the right specialties mm -hmm. there. Uh, VA is looking at this issue. We are desperately trying to hire psychiatrists in El Paso and specialists in, in Indiana. Uh, but one of the ways that we are beginning to do this is to really use um, telehealth in a way for rural And veterans. telehealth is working in my district, I will tell you and, that. And, but for specialized care and well, for things like cancer and, and those kinds, of, it's so hard. We are moving rapidly towards specialty telehealth. In fact, people don't realize nobody is doing more telehealth in the country than VA. And we are, we are, we are driving this faster than anybody. <laughs> And that's, that can't be the total answer, yeah. but we have to look towards new technologies. Right, I do agree. And, and we have to get more providers. And I will, yeah, and I will give you that. It does definitely works in, in our state. But I appreciate your willingness to come and help us troubleshoot. I go back. 